Nigeria's political journey since independence from Great Britain 61 years ago has been a mixed bag of sweet and sour, of attaining continental and global excellence and subsequently losing respect in the Committee of Nations following his or her history of protracted military rule. With the country in her fourth civil republic and preparing for another general election still under the much criticized 1999 constitution, what are the prospects going forward? Well, joining us now to have a discussion is Sule Lamido, a former governor of Jigawa State in northwest Nigeria and a former Nigerian minister of foreign affairs. We want to say welcome to Newsday and happy independence. Now, to kick off things today, um, the president spoke about the fight against insurgency and banditry and the strides that were made. Over 8,000 have been captured. In your opinion, do you think we are winning the war against insurgency and banditry in the north? All right, I want to say thank you very much again to you, sir. If you can hear us clearly, we are celebrating independence, but it's also a time for introspect. The president spoke about the strides made by the military in the north. And to be very precise, he said over 8,000 um, Boko, Boko Haram have been captured. Do you think we've made major strides in the north in the fight against insurgency and banditry? Congratulations. I always seem to be have losing connection, but I, I must say that. Can you, hear, can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you right now. All can right, you, you have me? the floor. Please talk to us. Okay. You can hear me now. Yes, go ahead. There's a kind of disconnect between the connection. Yes, go ahead, please. Again, let me say to Nigeria. Eh? Okay, fine. Once more, let me say again to Nigeria, congratulations for being 61 years old as an independent nation. Secondly, uh, I'm not here to assess Nigeria's security. Because I've always said, you know, being a partisan politician, being a PDP man, uh, whatever, I may not be taken, you know, in good, in good sense of it. And, uh, but I may say, you know, if you look at the last tensor of our national anthem, talking about democracy, Peace and love. This should be able to be an insight of what, how far, where we are now. If you look at the last stanza of our, of our stanza. So it's for Nigeria now to judge and see whether they are there or, or not there yet. The issue of capturing maybe isn't Boko Haram. Uh, again, you see, the question is are we safe now? I yesterday had somebody from a uh, member house of somebody from so Narrating the story of agony and anguish of people there. I saw Bapara talking about, you know, people who cannot even go and collect their, 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 their harvest from the farms after, 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 after the rain season. And so, really, it's for a general to assess whether we are safe or not. It's not for me, really. Okay, sir. I just want to take it back just a little bit in the spirit of Independence Day. Um, can you reflect on uh, the nation's 61 years of the nationhood being a... Uh, key participant in our nation's democracy since it was reintroduced in 1999. What are some of your reflections on some of the things that we might have gotten right and we might have gotten wrong? Thank you very much again. Uh, when Nigeria became independent, I was there, I think, 12 years ago. And I think from that time to date, of course, naturally, uh, there, there are some kind of developments in the country. Uh, if you look at the population, it has grown, which means we're making more babies than the progress of, <laughs> of development. And uh, somehow, you know, as a nation, we're somewhere now, but certainly not to where we want to be as an ideal nation. If you look at our resources, our endowment, our huge culture and history, and the way God placed us to play a role in the community of nations, I don't think we, we, we have any cause to maybe say we've fulfilled our role as a leader of the black race. We are trying to, but they were not there yet. What 
are some of the missed opportunities that you can say that we have, um, we have taken as a nation? And maybe any suggestions as to how to get back on track for some of those missed opportunities? You see, what you're going through a civil war. Me, something called love and trust is missing in Nigeria. And there's no way any country can grow if there is no trust, if there's no love, if there's no empathy. And again, a government of the world over is built on three institutions. One, the economy. Two, the bureaucracy. Three, the political class. And uh, there's nowhere in the world where these three are working at the same time in, in perfect order. It's either one or two working. So if you've got a very strong political class, you will be able to pull the country no matter how weak it is economically. If you've got a very strong civil service, it will be able to also pull the country no matter how weak it is. If you've got a very strong economy, of course, but then where none is missing, where none is there in Nigeria, all the three are gone. They have all collapsed. The economy, the bureaucracy, and the political have all collapsed. Those literally were just groping around in darkness. If only we had one standing, if you've got a very strong economy, you will be able to pull the rest. Or if you've got a very strong political class, but none of them is there standing now. They've all collapsed. So it means we have, got, we have to start anew. This is my feeling and my own opinion about it, that you know, the institution which is supposed to support a strong nation have all collapsed in Nigeria. How do we go about rebuilding those institutions? That's the question on every Nigerian's mind. You know, we know that these institutions have collapsed and they have issues. It's about the rebuilding. Um, and we need statesmen, strong statesmen like yourself, to help us come up with some of the um, solutions as to how to rebuild these. <laughs> Thank you, my sister. You see, we all, know, we all know what is wrong with us, all of us, as people. And uh, the, point I, the point I'm trying to make, there's echo coming into my ears from your, I'm hearing, I'm hearing my voice. I'm hearing my voice there. It's an unfortunate... Sir, Hello? we are all listening to you. Uh huh. You are hearing me now. Yes, we are hearing you. Very good, very good. What I'm saying is, if you're asking me for a way forward, yes, then all of us, as Nigerians, should be able to sit down and reflect and do some soul searching. Where what is wrong with us? In the entire world, there is no way where you find that you know life has become a source of agony more than in Nigeria. It means something is missing. So how do we restore our common love, our common bond, so they will be able to once more trust each other? For instance, we're not trying to go into election you know, in next year or in the next two years. And yet, you know, in Nigeria today, we're talking about my own, my own side, my own zone, my own people. I mean, how do you build, how do you build a nation like this? If you're talking about your own zone, your own people, your own time, then it means we don't unite for Nigeria. So let's put Nigeria in the middle. Let's all unite around Nigeria. All of us are federation. Nigeria should be the epicenter. Let us unite around it and see what we can do to develop it. But then when we say, no, within this, you know, circular, circular kind of formation or federation, I'm going to take my own side first before there is on Nigeria. Then we want, we're not moving. So how do we make sacrifices? How do we begin to see the bigger picture called Nigeria? How do we begin to see, as leaders, you know, what were we before we grew? What are we today? I mean, Nigeria has been there for all of us. It has been there for Bahari. It has been there for Sud Lamido. It has been there for all of us. Now, what can we do to pay in Nigeria so they can be there also for other Nigerians who are growing in the future? Then the feeling, I mean, we, we should be able to really look inward and say, what have we gone, where have you gone wrong? What do we do? That feeling of sacrifice, that feeling of nationalism, that feeling of brotherhood, that feeling of sisterhood, that feeling of you are mine, I'm yours. How do we forge together? Rather than you know, creating you know, divides and division between tribes, between religions, between zones, between areas. And it's just too sad. If you don't have the political structure correct, we'll never go to the nation. We need to have you know, a very, very clear political arrangement whereby we are all united into a, as a country, serving ourselves and the country in the future. Not really serving your own brother or your own sister or your own kith or your own kin or your own zone or your origin. No. I mean, we have something you know, which we should say is ours, something we all share, our own common bond. This is what I'm saying at the beginning. All right. Thank you for that, sir. All right, Mr. Lamido, permit me to come in here. And I want to find out from you because a lot of Nigerians 
and political analysts have called out politicians for heating up the polity, causing rift and division uh, along ethnic religious lines over the years. And the reason why Nigeria is not stronger today than it was, than it should be rather, is because politicians are more self-serving as against national service. You are very correct. You are right. You are right in what you are saying because if only we can unite, you see, that's the thing. how do we unite around Nigeria, not around our own personal interests, not around our own ethnic groups or our own zone? I would say, look, look at PDP, my own party today. I mean, the only party with the capacity to be able to in Nigeria, with the political networking, which is, under, which is Nigerian ownership, which is led by all Nigerians, and which is also trying to raise the whole of all Nigerians. And Nigerians believe in PDP, but then PDP today is saying, you no, know, zoning is not a problem, north and south. Now, tell me in which way having a problem will simply minimize your anguish or, or, or your pain. I mean, I've been saying, look, with all respect, with all respect to the president, he is an, a northerner, my own pride, full animal. But then are we better off under him than we are under Jonathan? To be honest. So it's not, you know, having your own man there. You know, it is having somebody who will be there for all Nigeria, who will be able to get Nigeria very, very secure, and then create another, that, you know, ambient of harmony, of love and respect, and then begin to face, then from there on, we begin to face, you know, human development. There is no way we can develop as a people, and, you know, face the issue of poverty, face the issue of infrastructure, and what have you, if there is no mutual respect, if there is no mutual love. Mutual love. Therefore, let us, let us, all of us now, United around Nigeria first. Look at this show, this Mambila thing. I mean, the government has been saying, I mean, they've been verifying PDP that, you know, we've told the money about how many billion dollars from Mambila uh, scheme, that they're going, they're going to be off the road. And today, my Mambila, I saw a picture, you know, a, a program done by somebody in BBC. And you could see it's still in, in the wild. So there is no sincerity for leadership. So you are right. If you, if you say we failed in the position, we have, of course we have. Because the political class, are too busy trying to find out know, what adventure can they make out of Nigeria, rather than giving Nigeria big something. So you are right, but then it's about time we begin to come together and unite and look at the country and see, I mean, it's, we should not be a world embarrassment. We should not be, to be honest. We should be able to raise the hope of the black race of the world over because the Nigeria has been saying over and over, you know, Nigeria is the mother and, and the father of the black race. The people in diaspora, people in Africa look up to Nigeria for inspiration. We are supposed to be the black man's reference point. But are we? We sincerely hope to be, as we work hard for it. But um, <laughs> since we touched on that uh, touchy issue of zoning, let's speak about the gentleman's agreement between the parties about um, where the next president of this great nation will come from. It seems to be stirring a little bit of um, controversy, but. I'm wondering, it seems like you're saying that we should be going towards more of a merit-based system where we find leaders who are um, set for the job, or do you really think that we should maybe focus on um, the fairness of this gentleman's agreement of zoning? You see, the issue of zoning has a history. Let us reflect, you know, in 1999, what are then the issues facing Nigeria in terms of our cohesion as a nation? June 12 was the main issue which needed to be resolved, you know, in 1999. Because by that element, you know, a chunk of the country felt that they had been cheated, that they, they, they felt that, you know, some, uh, another, another particular uh, area is trying to dominate the country, and therefore we want political power. So the issue of June 12 has to be resolved first. And that's why. The PDP was formed in 1998, a party of vision, a party of leaders who are very focused, a party of people who know, can reflect and say, what happened yesterday? And what are we going through today? And what do we want to achieve tomorrow? So I said, look, there is no way you can move forward until you restore that thing called trust between Nigerians. Trust is very important. And the way the country was in 1998 was, you know, there was no trust. People in the south, you know, people, people trust. I mean, I'm sorry if I sound a little bit, you know, you know, you know what, you know. People in the south, you know, trust people in the north because they said, that, why should you add you, why should, why was June 12 annulled? So we say, fair enough. As a country with which we all share, as a country which is our own for each and everyone, what do we do 
to restore that thing called common bond, trust between Nigerians. So let's this issue of the injury of June 12th. Let's look at it. Now, even though we're going to go through democracy, but then democracy should be able to address and heal our problems and cure our problems. I say again that, you know, even America, which is supposed to be the mother of democracy, you know, there are sometimes you are by, you know, they truncate democracy in other countries because those democracies in other countries you know, are not in tune with their own foreign policy requirements. So they truncate it. They did so in Algeria in 1990, in, in 1990. They did so in, uh, uh, in, in Palestine. They did so, you know, in, 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 in Egypt. It means democracy per se has to be able to address your needs, your interests, not to improve you. So it's fair enough. In Nigeria now, even though we talk about right to vote, right to, to, to aspire, but then for the purposes of restoring trust and peace and really giving that sense of belonging to Nigeria, you know, will shut out other zones from contesting for the presidency and allow a particular zone which was then agreed to give up the president. That's what we did as PDP, because like, you know, it's a party of leaders who had vision, who, who, who had the love of Nigeria at heart, and who believe in Nigeria, and therefore who also believe in fairness and justice. So we say, fair enough, we shall locate the presidency to the southwest. And I think that alone, that alone made the effect, made the impact. Because even then, the other two political parties, AD and uh, I think MPP, after, after they held their own conventions, where Odufala emerged under AD, and I think uh, Obono Ono emerged under APP. Because of the wisdom of the, of the they saw in PDP, because they saw PDP's political maturity, they said, fair enough, they collapsed those conventions and brought, you know, Olufala of AD to run under APP. And then withdrew, withdrew, withdrew uh, Ono, he was sacrificed, and he agreed. So it means in 1999, you had the two candidates coming from a particular area because of the injury of trust, so they can be appeased. Now, the two candidates, you know, to us in PDP, we say, look, even though it's going to go to the West, but then we are looking for the Yoruba Nigerian president, not president of the Nigerian Yorubas. Get this very, very clear, you know? I, and I, I mean it, I mean no disrespect, you know? I mean no ill will. At that time, if you say Europe will give us a president, they will either give you Olufala, or they give you Adesanya, or they give you Bolaike. And we feel that, you know, by their disposition, by their history, by their pronouncement, you know, they don't seem to fit the kind of, you know, real Nigeria, pan-Nigerian kind of requirement. So we said, no, we'll not. We'll give you Obasanjo, who has got a track history, a history of being a pan-Nigerian, somebody who has been in Nigeria, who fought a civil war, and who has been there for Nigeria. And even the election which he held in 1999 were part of the program of his late brother, Muslim Mohammed, which he faithfully tried to implement. So it means we want somebody who will be able to be there for all Nigerians, not for a particular part of Nigeria. Because if if Anali, if, if Anali Jude 12 was seen as being there for only the North, then it means if we're trying to correct it, it had to be for all Nigerians. So that's what we did. And so the two parties, both PDP and uh, the other two parties, you know, had, uh, had people from the South, even though the other parties were different, were able to collapse their convention and produce a Western candidate. And that's how Nigeria was healed. And two years into our government in 1999, but by the year 2001, Nigeria was thoroughly healed, thoroughly reconciled, fully restored. And our image and our role in the world, in which we was fully restored, we were respected, we had a tremendous influence, and in Africa and the world, we became a leader of the black race. Now, what happened between 1990 and date? All these gains have been washed away because of APC government. It is restored, you know, it has brought by you know, this issue of division between a father and a son, between a brother and a brother, between religions. I mean, I am, I'm not trying to verify anybody. I'm just simply narrating simple facts of what is happening in Nigeria. That, you know, the political party called APC, which has no capacity for anything but mischief, has destroyed Nigeria. So what do we do? So it's now for all Nigeria, both PDP and the APC, to see, why don't you ignore this, you know, mundane and this, you know, secular, you know, requirement of my own man, my own time, my own tribe, my own religion, and begin to say, okay, fine, who will be there for all Nigerians? When we do that, when we do that, 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 that I mean, the other thing will simply fall into shape and will be, will be home and dry, will be very secure, will be very, very safe, will also restore confidence and trust in institution and incumbent. All right. Mr. Lamido, um, of course, as we're gleaning on the Independence Parade in Abuja, the Eagle Square, Al, you've mentioned some
political actors that have helped shape Nigeria's history over the years. Of course, the president there actually observing a match past there at the Eagle Square in Abuja. Now, coming back to you, you've mentioned some names, like I said, that have actually shaped our political um, landscape over the last 20 years plus. Now, I want to ask you, as we're looking into the new frontier, hoping to get a better 61 years in front of us, what should that candidate possess going into the 2023 election when people are searching for a candidate? What are the ethos, what are the tenets that the candidate, the preferred candidate should possess as Nigerians will be heading towards the polls? Well, before you come to the kind of you know, qualities he needs, you know, first, I will now thoroughly heal that we now will go for, for merit. That's the question because in 1999, there was a reason. That's why you know, I'm willing to sacrifice quality and go for something which should be able to assuage, to pacify and restore love. Now, after 20 something years, I will now fully restored, fully reconciled. Bitterness, there is no pain in us. Or oh, I will say the same thing why in 1999. Now, if you answer this question, if we are fully and they are now a single entity, a brotherhood, sisterhood, a family of Nigerians, they think we should go for merit. I tell you what you call merit. But if I still to go for this, you know, emotionally assuaging, em emotional comforting, and, 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 and saying it's for this man, then it means you're not talking about Nigeria or about, you know, progress or about human development. You're talking about having it for my own sake for my people. So that, but then I thought that, you know, after 20 years by now, we should be able to look for quality. But then you see, the party in government has literally verified everybody. It has destroyed our common bond. And that's why back where we were in 1999. So, so it means, again, that's why this glamour of North and South, you know, Christian, Muslim. So before I say, you know, tell me, are we now fully reconciled and fully restored that we go for quality? They will tell you how, how, the kind of person I need for as my president. <laughs> All right. Since you, since you insist in that um, we, we should, at this point in time, we are not ripe for quality, but rather that's probably regional and also probably religious uh, proclivities might determine those that head towards the polls. Does, will this help change the future of Nigeria, or are we still heading down the same path as it stands right now? Is that our current state now? Is that our current state that we are now still where we are in 1999? You know, that a country divided, a country which is now there, you know, to pacify emotions, a person which is there now to simply sacrifice decency, sacrifice development, sacrifice, you know, prosperity, sacrifice, you know, uh, 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 peace, and then go for the person. That's, you see, because the current crisis we are going through of insecurity, both north and south, whether Boko Haram or the, the, the issue of pipe, I, I put, or this boy they call it Ogolo or whatever, you see, are simply because that thing called trust is gone. We don't trust each other. And, and, and while there is no trust, there cannot be anything called, you know, stability. If there's no stability, there cannot be anything called peace. If there's no peace, you can't have anything called human development. It's a simple thing. They go in line. So the question is, you know, I mean, at 61 years of age, a country which has 20 million population, a country with all our endowments, with everything God, you know, you can, you can pray to get from God. God has given Nigeria, yet we are still there, you know, talking about, you know, uh, that man from the north, that man from the south, uh, his Fulani, uh, his Hausa. I mean, for, for God's sake, I mean, I mean, say, look, when you, when you get an, you know, when you get a bus and put in a Nigerian, a Tanzanian, somebody from Togo, from Cameroon, and other uh, countries in Africa, take him anywhere in Germany or in Europe. You see, who are these? They send a black man. <laughs> they will see the black man. Take it or go to Europe and pick a, you know, take a bus and put, you know, a German and a, a, a Polish and a, a British and a French and then an American and they, uh, take, 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 take them in, in that bus, take them to my own village. They say, who is this? They say, now white man. So, so, you see, see, so you see, why are we putting us into compartments of, you know, Africa and then talking about this, about that? Why? Well, we are a single race of black people. 
And the Nigeria is the father and mother of the black race. We should be inspirational. We should be the reference point. Why are we dragging ourselves back? And in any case, all these agitations, they happen with a lifetime. In the next 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, there'll be, there'll be Nigeria. I mean, beyond Sud Lami, you know, beyond Buhari, beyond all the actors, there'll be Nigeria. I mean, today, why is Awolo? Why is Awolo? Why is Pazukwe? Why is the Munichan? They are all, but then they played a role of making sure they know they. Nigeria united and stable and prosperous and happy as a single family. That's why today I was able to be a governor, a foreign minister. You know, Buhari fought a civil war. If you don't be, I mean, that's what he's a Nigerian president. So what I'm saying, what are we doing? Those who were able to use Nigeria, who were able to be, to be so lucky, they've been that kind to us, they've been there for us. What are we doing to also pay back? So that, you know, in the next 25, 30 years, those who are under 25 are going to be 50 years, 60 years old. What are we preparing for them? So the issue now is about leadership. You need a leader who will be over and above emotions, who will have you know, the courage of his own convictions. A leader who will look at you and say, look, do the right thing. If you don't, I will not have to know. Whether you're my own kith and kin, whether you're my own tribe, whether you're my own religion, I will not talk because I'm not the Nigerian head of state. I'll give, an, I'll give you a story. I'm sorry I have to make it, but then you see, when Obasanjo became the president, <laughs> there was a meeting held in, in Abiyakuta. They called him. He went with me. I'm saying so not because, you see, I'm just trying to make a point. That's why I'm just trying to narrate it, to find out kind of whether, you know, when you have a leader, then you can go and sleep. We went to Abiyakuta. And uh, when we went to Abiyakuta, there was a meeting of who was who in Abiyakuta with all these So when we entered the hall, they saw me, they looked at me, obviously, don't worry, Suli is my son, don't worry. We sat down. And... Uh, I, I, I see, I'm, I'm saying this with all sense of responsibility, with all sense, you know, of honor, that, you know, I'm just trying to make a point. So when they say, okay, fine, Mr. President, you are now there, so, so blah, blah, trying to maybe caress him and, 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 and win him over into a kind of, you know, their own side. He says, I say, I beg your pardon, please. I beg your pardon. He said, God gave me Nigeria as the leader of the country. You're not trying to pull me back into a tribal leader, Yoruba leader, that kind of thing. And he walked away. We walked. So you see, that's the kind of person you want in Nigeria. You know, went for a campaign in, in River State in, in, in 2003. And Peter Audley, at that time, he said, I'm making this point so that you know, people can understand what I'm saying, so that you know, you know where I'm coming from. You know, Peter Audley, at the stadium, stood up and said, look, Mr. President, we in the South, South, and we discussed thoroughly about our even oil. God, his own wisdom, his own mercy, gave this oil to people in this particular area, under our own soil. So, you are here to campaign. We are going to elect you, but then on one could tell us, what is the status of our oil as far as we are concerned? Because God gave us this oil here in our own area, under our own soil. And uh, I, my, my heart, you know, missed a bit. I said, good God, how, do we, how does he respond to this kind of, you know, because he was, they were caging him. I mean, it's a black male. He was look, there looking for votes. Then, you know, typical people like Obasanjo, he said, Peter, thank you very much. Today, we're not going to talk about this. We're talking about God. We're talking about God. He says so. So let's, uh, let's leave politics aside. He said, now, God in his own wisdom, who gave you this oil, the same God says also that, you know, we are people of a Nigerian single family. Therefore, this oil is also for the men from Jigawa and also the men, the men from, uh, uh, from, from Rivers. Right. So the oil under this soil is given to God, given by God, and God doesn't make a mistake, and therefore it's a Nigerian oil. He says so. Hmm. I mean, you could see the kind of courage to say the right thing what he does most. To say the right thing, because somebody looking for votes will say, ah, Okay, it will begin, you know, kind of shivering and shaking because if he doesn't give the right, if he doesn't give the right answer, he may lose the votes. But then to Obasanjo, the votes are immaterial when it comes to Nigeria. The votes are immaterial. You know, Nigeria first, the country first. So a leader who has the capacity and the integrity and the moral courage to say the right thing at the right time. Yes, yes, sir. We have to leave you on this point. Thank you so much for these very reflective words on Nigeria at 61. Thank you for joining us. Super.